Welcome back on Adobe and Behance live stream. I'm your host Tanya Kaur, and we are here today with the very talented Paula Casa for an exciting Hi. brand and identity session. Paula, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I am great. We are so happy to have you here, and we are extremely so excited. excited to see what you create. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> excited to be here. This is oh, this is so fun. I can't wait to it do is. this with you. <laughs> So before we get started, if you missed the stream before us, be sure to check out the second week of the new Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Andrew Hushardell every weekday at 11:30 a.m. Pacific. Tune in and take your Illustrator skills to the next level. If you're on YouTube, hop over to Behance, which is be.net/adobe/live. This is where the fun happens. So join in on the conversation. You can also keep watching Adobe Live when you're offline. This live stream is hosted on Behance, so folks, be sure to bookmark this, save it, do whatever you have to, because the content that Paula will show us is valuable. Everyone, please give Paula a warm welcome. So, okay. Paula, stage is all yours. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, so like you just said, I'm Paula Casa. I'm a graphic designer, freelancer, who's also a YouTube content creator. So I have a YouTube channel where I share graphic design, art, any kind of inspiration, any kind of thing. <laughs> like we talk, we create, that's my channel. Um, so I am primarily a designer for content creation. That's kind of how I would describe myself, basically, because I've been doing a lot of design work online. Like it's mostly to share and just inspire other people, help other people. That's the majority of what I do. So I'm not just a graphic designer at a company or anything. I've always worked for myself and I've, I'll talk a little bit about how I got into that. I've kind of just fallen into this path of work um, this way. So yeah, um, I guess I can go into just talking about my work, my YouTube channel. Um, so here is my YouTube channel, if anyone is interested, <laughs> a little self promo, but yeah, so like I said, I create design work for content. So I'm always sharing on social media. I'm always sharing new design work, new projects, and I do a lot of like creation of projects, like things that I've made up or, you know, reimagined brands, stuff like that. So that's kind of the direction I've been going a lot lately. So as you can see, there's a lot going on on the channel. It's kind of, kind of crazy, but yes, that's the YouTube channel. Um, and then I share a lot of that work on Instagram. Um, so like a recent project I did was a business card just for fun, just for a video. And we put it on Instagram. You know, I'm putting things out there all the time. And of course, mixed in with my <laughs> personal life, things like that on Instagram. Not really as relevant, but yes. <laughs> um, it is wonderful. We love your work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. But yeah, this is my website. Um, it's Definitely not updated. That's kind of my goal in 2022 is to update and get more projects out there. This is a lot of older stuff, but um, I love working with handmade work, like handmade items, tactile things, things I can touch. Um, my favorite thing is just like working with new mediums and still making them design. So like here, this is actually bubblegum, um, my bubblegum oh my typeface. God, wow. Yeah, and I kind of loved how it ended up looking like like gross and weird. I don't know. I just kind of like how it ended up a little weird. Um, so yeah, I just do a lot of stuff that requires like photography, even though I'm not a photographer, I love to utilize photography. I love just using like, this is fabric. This is some of my fabric work that I've made kind of postery. Um, so yeah, stuff like that is what I love, but majority of my work and brand work, I'm always sharing um so like i said i'm always sharing on social media so um here's a recent project i did where it was actually a series on youtube um so i made like a five-part series where it was just like let's create a whole brand so we made the logo we made some packaging we made uh the photos the marketing 
Um, so yeah, I just, uh, here's my posters. Here's like some info on it. And then this was the brand. Um, which, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was the model. <laughs> I was the model because who else do I have to photograph? Um, but yeah, so I just did like a bunch of different elements of it. I printed the packaging. I, you know, it was mostly about marketing and photos. Like I said, I'm not a photographer. I'm not perfect at it, but that's what I love incorporating into my branding. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of like type-based logo, which I'm obsessed with typography. If that's one thing to take away about me, I'm obsessed. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I can. And then I wanted to share a little bit more of my work here. So this oh, is a also- bit more. This yeah, it's amazing. Also, Paula, the chat is blowing up. Everyone no saying hi. We see Jacob, Ryan, Anthony, Jake. Everyone just saying hello, Paula. How are you I'm doing? Like, hi, Love everyone. Love the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. Okay, so th- that's awesome. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're here watching. I'm sure some people are uh, coming in from my YouTube channel, like I've shared on my social media. Like I've said, it's just it's a lot of content creation. That's a, a lot of my work. So, um, yeah. So here, I have my Flores branding shop. It was again, a made up brand. So I used some photos just from online because this type of stuff for me, I just like to share on YouTube. It's not like super serious. It's just fun. So it's a fun type of project to just make and make mock-ups and stuff like that. Um, And then this one is a brand called Comfort Club. Again, completely fake. Um, But people were saying, you know what, you should make this real, make some merch. I'm like, that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I made like some packaging, some logos. Um, again, I just love type-based stuff. That's always what I'm doing. Um, that's the majority of my work is typography. Uh, love it. <laughs> Paloma yeah. in the chat is saying branding is my jam. I Paloma, think we hi. all love that. That's the energy we're all on. That's amazing. We're, Thank we're you, obsessed Paloma. with yes, we're obsessed. Um, so I guess that's all about me. We can kind of get into the project yes let's let's get into what we're doing today um so we're creating a recycled clothing brand i know you guys saw it in the title um so i wanted to just start by talking a little bit about what that is um so if you're not aware this is what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a like secondhand donation based brand like a community type of organization so what I wanted to do is do some market research. So let's get into it. Should so we get into fresh. it? Is the chat yes. saying anything crazy? Okay. Oh, Amelia from the chat is saying, yes, I love Paula's videos. So oh, there's cool. a fan right Hi, there. Amelia. Amazing. Thank you, Amelia. <laughs> okay, so market research, I wanted to kind of just address what's out there already with secondhand brands, um, secondhand clothes organizations um a lot of these are organizations like charity kind of um brands businesses um so we have on the top row more like broad type of brands um goodwill and salvation army are very broad um planet aid is a place where you know you can all these places really are places you can go and drop your clothes um anywhere really or they take it at the store it's a very like broad, you know, for the environment, for the people in the community. Those are the types of the way that they're going with that. The lower three, um, Souls for Souls specifically, is like a shoe donation one. So these are more specific. Um, so that would be like for people in need who need shoes. Obviously, you would go and bring it to Souls for Souls. Um, Dress for Success is specifically for business attire and helping people get jobs. And then Free the Girls is for undergarments and then breast cancer, like awareness and research. So there are like ones with specific organization needs and stuff like that. So I figured, you know, covering that, it does kind of, it does inform the visual aspects of it, I would say. It informs the logo and it informs um, just the whole brand identity and what they stand for. So I thought we would go a little bit more into it. So for example, Goodwill, a more broad one, it's very community-based. Their mission statement and their value statement are here. Um, We don't have to read every single word on it, (laughs) but like basically what their purpose is as a as an organization is to you know enhance people's lives and helping the community it's very community community oriented um so you know helping people get opportunities helping people get out there um and then 
it's, you know, their values are respect, stewardship, ethics. So, you know, it, they're really out there to help people. And I think as a big organization, that makes sense. And um, it's great that they're still like community focused, even while being like a nationwide brand. Um, so that's something that I thought was interesting about them. And that definitely informs their logo choice um, with the the blue is very like friendly and approachable. And of course, a smiley face. That's what you see. So, you know, you see a smiley face, you see a G, you might see something else. You never know. <laughs> but yeah, so dress for success, like I said, a more specific one, not as broad, um, is specifically for empowering women and um, yes, to achieve economic independence, like it says. So it's a network, it's providing clothes, it's providing the attire you would need for interviews, helping people get jobs. Um, so this is definitely like community focused, but for a whole different reason. So I thought we would kind of look into that, just how that informs them too. And for me, uh, also with the logo, I don't know exactly like the purpose of the logo. So I thought that was kind of interesting because I'm like, hmm, what does it mean? Like dress for success, you know what I mean? Like yeah. with their with their logo, which, you know, props to them. They have a great company. I love it. But I just am like wondering what is um, like, what's the motivation here? So I thought that was interesting as well. Um, so then I wanted to include a private company. This one's not an organization. So it's actually like a private owned business and Buffalo Exchange, um, if you haven't heard of it, it's a place where you can come in and sell your clothes. So you would sell and they choose. So they do focus on like curation of of fashion also they care about trendiness they don't just take everything um so it's a place where you would go to find like more trendy clothes and you can make some money if you do want to you know get rid of your clothes and get new ones which is great i mean some of these do focus more on the environment i obviously think that's a great thing to focus on too when we talk about this like secondhand better for the environment to buy secondhand and also donate your clothing just in general so I thought that was interesting. Um, with this one, it's definitely more about curation, but also still about the community and integrity for the people who who shop there and want to sell their clothes there. So that's kind of that on market research. Um, but yes, I did want to touch on one thing because talking about sustainability, I guess. Um, greenwashing as a concept, if you're unfamiliar with it, um, greenwashing is a practice where a company can utilize one product or even the color green to make things seem more eco-friendly, sustainable, stuff like that. I didn't want to put a specific company on like on here to say, oh, they do this because that would be crazy. So I just <laughs> incorporated this photo that I found of like, you know, if McDonald's turned their stuff, their logo green, like would they look more eco-friendly? I don't know. But but yeah, it's not just about changing your colors to green. It can also just be about having maybe like one eco-friendly product when the rest of the company is doing something that is actually against that. So it's it's an interesting tactic. And I think it's something definitely to keep in mind when creating this type of brand, because we don't want to overdo it and say like, we're all about sustainability, environment. That's all we care about. And that's all we do. And it, when it also is a, a private owned company or a place where you're actually buying so you can't just be completely sustainable if you are buying so i just wanted to touch on greenwashing as a design practice and you know how we get there so um our project is fold i have named it fold <laughs> this is going to be completely imagined um we're creating it we are you know making every single aspect of it so let's talk about that so Fold is a donation-based organization that focuses on curating and creating a fashionable space in its community. We value sustainability in our push to be less wasteful in our choices and more mindful in our spending. We want to be accessible to all and strive to be seen as a new way to donate and buy clothing. So I definitely wanted to like marry the two concepts of organizations and private-owned companies where this can be curated. It can still be a place where you come to find like specific clothes that you want, but also it can be a place where you go and donate all your clothes because it's good for the community and it keeps people coming back and it can be accessible for everyone because there can be all sizes, there can be all types of people, all incomes, it can be affordable. So that's the direction we're going in with that. 
Um, so I wrote down some keywords that we can kind of keep in mind for the visual aspects of it, you know, sustainability community, but also fun, unique curating again, like just specific, um, specific types of things that you would want out of a, out of a brand. You wouldn't want just everything. Um, so then we're going to be creating a typeface logo. Um, so we'll get into that in a second <laughs> and some other aspects. These are kind of what we're going to be working on the uh, like over today and tomorrow. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, this is wonderful. In fact, the chat is loving what you're saying. Anthony oh, cool. is saying this market research is amazing. And Buduval <laughs> confirms that yes, she's affirming it, that this is brilliant what you're doing. We are very oh, excited. Gosh. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted to like research a bit more than some of my content on YouTube. I don't do as much research sometimes. So this is really fun and it's nice to like look into what other brands out there are doing. If, even if you're making your own brand, that's not going to be a real concept, really. It's still so important to focus on what's going on out there to just inform your visual ideas. Um, so here's some inspiration we had. Um, I wanted the brand to be at maybe like flea markets, like they could show up at vendor events and have stuff and have a place where you can come bring your clothes. If you're there, you can come donate. And then also maybe a storefront where you could come in, have clothes. Um, but yeah, and then I just kind of put some colors that were kind of fun, some, you know, some shapes that were kind of fun. So I have some ideas going. But yeah, that's that's what we're getting started with. <laughs> Lovely. We can't wait. <laughs> Cool, cool. Okay, so let's quit that and open up Illustrator. So here we go. We're in Illustrator, as you can see. <laughs> Let me just... Jumping there. right into it. <laughs> yeah, we're jumping right in, definitely. Um, so I have some info on the side just to make sure, like, we're keeping in mind what we're doing. Donation-based clothing brand. Um, we're, I have some info written down here to like the business address, which I've just made all this up. Like <laughs> this is not a real address. I'm just making sure we have some, some aspects to like put in for information, um, for our like business card or poster or whatever we're sharing later on. So that's the info there. <laughs> let's, let's get going. Um, I have some sketches of lettering that. I think is going to start us off with our logo design. Um, kind of crazy lettering, but this is <laughs> this is some sketching I did that was kind of all over the place, but I figured it would help us. It would help us along the way. Um, <laughs> so here we go. OK, so I love getting started straight in Illustrator. Like a lot of the times I don't even sketch, but for this project i was like you know what i'll do some like actual lettering like my own type of lettering um so yeah some of this is kind of new for me i've only done custom lettering a few times with um clients and stuff um but majority of the time i'm i'm just using anything on illustrator i just get started i go in there and i'm just like digital all the way you know what i mean <laughs> that's so me um but yeah okay so we're gonna get started in the pen tool um that's I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make this a bright color. I like to work in uh, bright colors and then turn it to black <laughs> because it helps me see the pen tool actually. Um, but yeah, oh, we have, we have a, we have an interesting question from the chat. So Anthony yeah. asks, why would you say Illustrator is your go-to tool for your work? Um, you know, I think I would, which is really strange to, for me even to be saying, because I think I used to be like, I used to focus in other programs more. And especially when I wanted to do more editorial stuff, I was like all over InDesign. And I still, uh, I love, I love InDesign. Like what love would it. you say your favorite Illustrator product or tools are? Um, I'm obsessed with the pen tool. As you can see, I'm already using it. It's the first <laughs> thing I jumped into <laughs> because that's what I always find the most helpful. Um, but yeah, I, I'll find myself like doing even layout stuff like in illustrator now which is surprising to me but um it's really it's really nice i mean it's become kind of my go-to for sure if i'm answering that question yeah like it it has become my go-to but yeah i'm obsessed with the pen tool i'm obsessed with just like using type on illustrator because it becomes so customizable um you know you can really start 
like changing the letters, like changing the integrity of the letters sometimes, but I love that. Like, why not make break some rules, make it fun. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> that's sometimes how I just want to work. So it is really, really fun for me to, to do that. And uh, those who are joining us right now, we are here with Paula Casta, who's working on an exciting branding and identity project. If you're on YouTube, hop over to Behance, which is be.net slash Adobe Live to join on the conversation, because this is where we are all hanging out. This is awesome. I'm like such a, an exploratory person when it comes to the pen tool too. So like, don't mind me clicking a million times, <laughs> but I... <laughs> I just find it so fun. I'm like, how can I manipulate this more? Let's change it. Jake from Chad is saying, this F is my everything. I think we yes. are all feeling that. Yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. I... It's already beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Because I was thinking it is a little bit more abstract, kind of, if we're... You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this is definitely going to be a concept of an F, more than an yes. actual F, <laughs> but like, I like thought that implied, was kind of... almost like an implied shape. You know, you just get yeah. it. It doesn't have to scream F, but the forms are just making it look like that type form. Exactly. I'm going to bring in a guide just to make sure we're like, you know, staying actually even with all this because my drawings are never good. I'll be honest. I am not the type of person that draws like, <laughs> and a lot of people ask me that when you know, on my YouTube channel or, you know, just anywhere they reach out and they're like, do I need to draw to be a graphic designer? Like, can I do this? I'm like, you're fine. Cause <laughs> trust me, I avoid it. <laughs> like I avoid it like the plague. I'm definitely not an illustrator. Um, and that's fine. Like, look what I'm doing. I'm doing shapes and letters on here. It doesn't mean I need to be perfect at drawing. Um, so yeah, definitely. I always answer that question. Like you're fine. Don't freak out. You can still be successful without drawing perfectly every single time. Like you can try different things, <laughs> you know? Yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I like this, but we're going to come back to it. I'm going to like lay out some of the letters and then we'll come back to it and start changing things up, you know, changing it, whatever, to whatever we want. <laughs> the chat is showing a lot of love. Voodoo Well says it's a pretty good F. And Selena says, hi, Valentania. Hola, Paula. And there's, it, they, she's saying that you are so talented, love seeing all the women graphic designers doing the right thing, doing the damn thing. We oh, love that's that awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love seeing women. This is the best. This is like yes. the best type of community when it's like all of us women designing, being badass, successful, you know, it's awesome. That's what we are here for. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't don't know what I'm doing with this one. I don't like this curve, but. So, so since when have you started designing, Paula? Like, how did you, you know, what's your design journey been like? Right. I guess I should talk a bit more about that, shouldn't I? <laughs> um, I, well, okay. So I studied fine art in school. Um, <laughs> me just saying I don't draw and then I studied fine art. But uh -huh. yeah, I, I studied fine art. I have a BFA, but I focused in graphic design. That was my concentration. So I, I graduated in 2018. Um, and then I really did not know what I wanted to do with that. I, I wanted to be a graphic designer. Obviously I did always have an interest in fashion. I mean, we're working with a fashion thing right now. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought I maybe wanted to work in fashion. I don't know. It just, it was never clear to me what I should be doing really. But then I decided to move to New York and I couldn't even find a job in New York, to be honest. Like sometimes things don't work out because they're pushing you to the thing that's supposed to work out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so with me, I think that's just how my life has gone. That's how my work has gone. Like it's always not working out because it's the, not the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And then I finally figure out the thing I'm supposed to be doing. And it turns out that it was really YouTube. Like I started my YouTube channel in college at the beginning of college. And I was just doing like any type of video, really. It wasn't specific to anything. Um, so I was doing like fashion. I was just talking about my life, whatever, and doing a little bit of design because that's obviously what I was interested in. Um, and the design just caught on and I'm like, oh, let's just keep doing this. Like, you know, and then now 
it's the only thing that I care about, <laughs> you know? <Amazing>. So, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's really turned into like a passion. It's really turned into like what I'm supposed to be doing. I just could never figure out what that was when I was trying to find a full-time position at maybe a studio or, you know, working in fashion. Like I thought it just wasn't right. And I could tell, I just, it just never seemed right. Um, so yeah, I definitely fell into this. It fell into working for myself, but, um, even throughout like, you know, the last two years since the beginning of 2020, it's been like, positive like things have worked for me with what I'm doing with my freelance or with clients or with this channel that I have on YouTube like there's just so many things that have worked out and it's like wow okay that's really where I'm supposed to be you know so yeah I don't know it's just that's kind of how I ended up where I am at I hope that answers your question enough. That, I'm just that, rambling that, about myself. No, that is the dream and you know what we have people saying that they, they agree with us on the chat voodoo well says that is so relatable because I think there's a moment, right, when you're wondering what is right for you and sometimes it just clicks and after that, mm -hmm. there's no going back. So you just know that that's what you were meant to do. And I think that's a beautiful feeling. I think that's just amazing. Absolutely. It's it's just the best feeling to know that you're, you are where you're supposed to be. When things finally start working for you, you're like, okay, okay, I get this. <laughs> like, that's definitely like how it is for me. It's always something that clicks and then I'm like, Wait a second. <laughs> like, is this what I should have been doing this entire time? But yeah. So you here. Are... Oh wow. <laughs> Sorry, oh, no. what do I do? We we just very curious about your YouTube journey. So you have a whopping 80,000 subscribers. Yes, I just uh, hit did... that. <laughs> Congratulations. And how Thank did that journey start? That's very oh, exciting. My gosh. So I mean, I said like I started in college. But like the design part of it has really has really taken off just recently. Like I didn't have many subscribers for a long time. Um, randomly, I got subscribers once because I was making a video about dyeing my hair. And then <laughs> a bunch of people watched it because I dyed my hair purple. <laughs> and yeah, it was funny. It was back years ago now. But yeah, um, that was kind of like the beginning um, with that, with just having any sort of audience out there looking at what I was doing. But I realized that when I shared design content, that was really what people were interested in. And it wasn't, it wasn't like they were, I mean, they were interested in me as a person, obviously. I'm not saying that no one's interested in me or something, but like, it's just really that I feel like I can help people with my design content. Like if I can just inspire people, if I can just share online, like any sort of tip or anything, like I'm happy. And I love interacting with everyone who like follows my channel. It's the most fun. Like it's so fun to just talk to people. So that's kind of, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it's just turned into all of this, you know, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is exciting. That is, that is amazing. Cause I mean, Th that takes, I mean, having your own YouTube following or your own YouTube channel takes a lot of dedication. You also have to be very mindful about the content you put out. And I think I have a mad ton of respect for those who do that. So that is really great. Like it's, it's commendable, yeah. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is scary. I mean, it is definitely interesting. Like the fact that I've kind of come up in my career with an audience of people telling me their opinions also at the same time you know what i'm saying like i don't think i mean obviously when we're in school or whatever like we have critiques we have to listen to what people are saying and we do develop a thick skin as designers but also like sometimes youtube comments or internet comments in general can be brutal you know so yeah like it it has been a journey with that with my self-confidence you know I didn't know we'd get so deep here, but yeah, uh, <laughs> it's definitely been a journey with what I'm doing and like feeling confident in my work. And now I'm, I'm finally getting to the place where I can share my work online and be like, I'm confident about this. Like, I feel good no matter what anyone says, I'm happy about this. You know what I'm saying? Like for a while, it was just hard to even post anything. I think that wasn't just because I had an audience. That was just me. I was scared to post my work and, you know, hear what people had to say or, you know, having imposter syndrome and thinking no one's going to like this or I'm not a talented designer. Like I, I have no right to be here. Um, so it's definitely been a journey with that, but I've come into my own, I think, which is, which is great. 
That is beautiful. We have some <laughs> questions on in the chat. So yeah. Anthony is asking, what would be your advice for someone who's just starting out on YouTube? Ooh, Anthony, good question. Um, I would say consistency is really key if you do want to like pursue it. Um, sometimes luck is also key, which <laughs> which is not the best thing to hear, but consistency and just um yeah being confident in your work and putting it out there like i love making videos no matter what is happening really like i'll make a video even if it's short and there's not a t i don't think there's like a ton of content but i'm like you know what this is good i should put it out and then it ends up sometimes being like the best received video like everyone's like wow i loved this i needed this i'm like oh okay and i was here overthinking it you know so yeah i would say if you're getting started just like don't be afraid first don't be afraid just just do it because just, just go for it yeah you may think the video is not gonna be good or whatever and you just never know like who it can impact or who it can help or you know someone could see it and just start following your work because of that and that's awesome you know uh we have george who's saying happy wednesday and keep up being an inspiration watching from south africa Oh my gosh, all the way from South Africa. Oh. That's so cool. This is awesome. What a positive chat experience. Like, I love this. This Voodoo is Val. funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Voodoo Val is saying, Paula, what is your experience with live streaming? Is this your first live broadcast? And how mm -hmm. does it feel to doing this versus a recorded video chat content? Right. Yeah, it is different. It's definitely different. It's funny because I feel like I'm online all the time. I should be used to this, but live is so different. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I've I've only done like one other live and it was literally about a month ago. It was just a conversation. It wasn't me designing or anything. Um yeah, that was with the university. But yeah, I I don't do live actually. So this is like my first designing live with people. I've never done it on my channel or anything. So it's kind of funny actually. The chat is making it's so much better. And if anyone in fact has questions, I know you're all typing it down, but make sure you ask questions on the chat and I will relay them to Paula. We do have another question. So Sean asks advice on finding clients or working as a young designer. Ooh, okay. So for me, I was kind of in a different position because I did have like a platform online, but I do like to encourage people to really put their work out there like on social media because it can, you never know who you're going to find or who's going to reach out to you from that. Um, for clients, like I, I don't have a specific way to do it. I feel like everyone does it in their own way. Um, but I feel like social media, the power of social media is just crazy when you like are working in this industry. And um, I feel like I've grown so much through all my client experiences. Um, and especially like as a younger designer, I, have like grown so much just working with like individuals who I reach out to or people that I know personally just getting started that way was so beneficial to me because I could really figure out like the type of designer I was and then um yeah and then that helped inform like working with clients later and now when I work with clients like they do come to me most of the time which is such a privileged position now to be in because they've seen my work online in general so if you're wanting to work with clients, I would say start putting your work out there in general, because that was a big thing for me. I was so afraid to put even post my work. I wonder if we made this longer. Would it look weird? Maybe. Ooh, that is weird. I don't know about that one. <laughs> it's looking a little goofy with that. That was a little bit extreme. I love the little moments that you have, like, you know how, Paula, you're working and you're just talking in your head and it's all about the process, right? Like you, you learn it on the go and you just keep doing it and yeah, wow, yeah. you never my find out if you didn't do it. <laughs> That's so my process. My process is to distract you all. No, but no, my, my process is very like exploratory. I'm always trying new things. I'm always trying new shapes and especially with lettering, like this type of stuff, I'm you know, it's fun. It's fun to explore and see like what you can do. And if it looks horrible, roll with it. Like who cares if it looks horrible? 
<laughs> you know, sometimes you can make something that looks horrible, make the most ugly thing you've ever made um, and then go back and make it cool. Yep. Agreed. Like you need it out of your system sometimes. Just, yeah. You know? Sometimes you have to go through the worst and you're like, what have I just done? <laughs> like uh-huh. I, I will look at my work sometimes and I'm like, okay, so I don't know what I'm doing at all. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, wait, just come back. Just read like rein it in and you know what you're doing. Um, I think definitely when I'm looking for inspiration online, that's what I get like. I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. These people out here online are doing amazing things. And then I'm like, no, you got this, Paola. Like, that's what I'm saying, the imposter syndrome, you know? I'm like, you can do this. You know these things. You know these concepts. Um, Let's see. I wonder if we can make the D shape out of this. Do you think this is looking all like capital letters or kind of a mix of lowercase and capital? So I'd say the thickness of it makes it look very uppercase like, but I mean, I definitely the O could be either, but yeah. D, you, you could give it a shot. I mean, your L could probably like the D stem could mimic the L or I don't know. Mm, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, it could, it's worth a try. Yeah, it could bounce off of it. Definitely. Let's see. We're just creating like crazy lettering, which I kind of love. I think it's, I think the brand should definitely be very bold in what it's doing, you know? Yeah, more like the brand mission, like their manifesto is to do like, it's anti-greenwashing and that's a bold statement on its own. So I think definitely. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, you know, secondhand clothes doing all of this, this is very like sustainable. It's a good choice. It's like, we're in the community. That's what I want to focus on. Like we're in the community. We want to like be part of the people, which I think that's what we're trying to translate here. Um, Definitely. Let me see. Let me see. Maybe. Hmm. I'm going to flip this around, I think. Transform. What am I looking at? Reflect that. Ooh. Just want to see some of this. I know, right? I'm like, hmm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh oh. Lagging on me. There we go. It decided to open type for some reason. Um, let's reflect it again vertically. I mean, obviously, that's a J right now, but <laughs> let's see if we can do something. It might be a little too heavy for this side. Just with that L being slightly thinner, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna work with this. And transform. Oh, we have a question from Anika in the chat. She says, love this type. Has Paula ever made a typeface? Did you use font self slash glyphs app? How was the experience? Oh, yes. I actually have done a full typeface that is working out on my computer. Um, But yeah, I did that in college in my advanced typography class. Um, It was, I think we used glyphs to create it. Um, And I wish I had like the programs to do that. Like I wish I could do more with type creation um because it is such an overwhelming process <laughs> like it's a lot it's you know I started with sketches on tracing paper over and over and over and over until it became what it was it's a very um robotic looking art deco almost actually I do have on my website I can show you let me just pop that up oh I like robotic looking art deco I like what, <laughs> how that sounds yeah, maybe exciting. I hope that's the right description when we click into it. Um, it should be in here. Yeah, it's in here. So this that's my working typeface I created. Very um, almost cartoon like Art Deco, I would say, too. Um, so, yeah, it was a very interesting project. I wanted it to be just kind of strange and <laughs> roll with that. I made like this little poster. Uh but yeah, that's this is a type specimen book. But yeah, it was definitely a fun process. It's a very overwhelming process. <sighs> definitely very overwhelming because there's so much there's so much that goes into um, creating typefaces. So sometimes, most of the time, when I'm working with clients, 
I'm way more interested in just making something specifically for them um, that's not fully working, you know? Um, I'd rather do something that's more unique to them. And and with the type of project especially, what would you say was your favorite part of the process? Ooh, my favorite part? Probably um, when I brought in everything from my sketches and actually started vectorizing it like this. That is really my favorite part because it just, it brings it to life. It looks like yeah. a real thing, you know, like, like looking at my sketch here, it's just like, yeah, I just drew out some lines because it's not so technical, you know, I just... I'm drawing, I'm exploring. But then once you put it digitally, you're like, this is crazy. Like, this is real. <laughs> um, and it just really looks like you've designed something. I, it's just like, it makes me proud of myself whenever I bring in stuff to, to Illustrator. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers everyone's questions. I feel like these questions are so good. <laughs> I think we have a new descriptor for your typeface. Anthony says, cartoon futuristic. Yes. That's such a good description. I was thinking, it's kind of funny when I look at it, for some reason, I think of the show Futurama. I don't know why. I didn't even intend that, but I love it. Ooh, look at this D. What if we did this? Ooh, this is so funky. Nice. Oh, what am I doing? Creating another one. <laughs> oh, I do like that. I mean, gonna, probably gonna have to change the um, size of the O. Let's connect this so it's one shape. So cool. I love this. Loving how it reflects like L and D, like the characteristics are just, you know, it, it feels a part of the same family, which is great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if this were something that you could type out, it would be definitely consistent with those types of shapes. So that's definitely something you should think about if you're creating a typeface, like consistency throughout the brand or like the logo or the type. Like if you're creating something like that, you do want to think about consistency, like not every single thing different because um, it could get a little chaotic. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be too chaotic. I think I like how this um, shape kind of uh, has this little swoop where this L is almost coming over top of it. Like that would be its direction um, to go over top of it. But let's let's get that X height going. Yeah, I think it interacts with the L pretty well, like the negative shape right there. Yeah, definitely. Like if I bring it closer, that, yeah, how it like, it just feels like it's part of it. I'm obsessed with kerning. Don't mind me pulling my letters together. <laughs> you spoke like a true graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like such a professional. Uh, but yeah, I love that type of stuff. Like with typography, like I said, it's just so fun for me. Typography is my my biggest like passion when it comes to my job because I really can focus on like either working with an existing typeface or creating something like this that is type based. Like I love logos that are type based because they just bring so much personality and energy to like a project. Um, it's just so fun. I just ugh, I'm having so much fun making this right now. <laughs> like this is like my therapy, you know, like this is so therapeutic to just do this type of stuff. I wow. I'm actually really liking this. I didn't know if I was going to like it this much, but I sometimes I can get a little crazy with the tweaking, um, but this is like, I'm already pretty satisfied. I wonder if I just brought this down a tiny bit. Does that do anything? Ooh, that's nice. That's at least above on the X height. Oops. Diane from the chat is asking, Paula, have you created an actual font from that custom typeface? It looks awesome. Yes, I did. Um, I could use it right now <laughs> if we want to look at it. So yeah, uh, I named it Vitality, but with like T, like, like, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe myself. Sometimes I just am so weird, like, especially when I was in school. <laughs> I um, suddenly I don't know the alphabet. Oh, here it is. Vitality regular, like vitality, like sipping tea. 
I was such a weirdo back then. <laughs> but yeah, see, you can do like, hello. <laughs> I can write my name. All caps, write my name. Can you see that? Oh, everyone can see that. That's the typeface I created. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was so fun and like funky and so weird. I don't think I would even make something like this if I were to do a typeface, a working font now. Um, if I had that opportunity to make that again, um, I definitely would do something way different. I've, I've changed a lot, I think as a designer, but it's definitely still me when I look at it. I'm like, oh, yep, I made that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a working one to answer his question. Yeah. Like I said, oh, <laughs> Dine says weird just means super creative. Oh. We love that. Yes. Yes, we are. We're just hanging out. We're here to be creative. That's like what I aim to do. You know, I aim to just have fun and just, I don't know, just inspire people. Like I said, like if I can just help one person, I'm happy, you know? Yeah, that's a way better. Here we go. So is your typeface available for purchase or do you, can you download it somewhere? It is That's a question not. from Voodoo Val. Ooh, are you, are you um, considering doing that? Sorry, Voodoo Val, but it's not at the moment. I, I wonder if I should. I haven't even thought about it because no one's really asked for it before, but I suppose I could put it out there somewhere. I'm definitely... Um, planning on like creating more things like into 2022 I want to make more and post more online for like maybe people to purchase so maybe a type my typeface would be a good place to start with that I'm not sure but that's a really good idea oh Dion I'm so sorry I got your pronunciation wrong <laughs> but uh, oh we have another question for the fold typeface in specific is, okay. is there is there a name for it that's what Anthony is asking for this lettering right here Yes, this experimental typeface. Hmm. I don't think I have a name for it. Maybe you guys can come up with a name for this in the chat because I have no idea what I would call this. It's very, very all over the place, but I kind of love that. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. I think maybe y'all should just drop some names on, in the chat. Yes. Drop Help some a friend names. out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's see. Let's see what people are saying. I think the best thing to do with this is to blow it up and see how that looks and then make it tiny and see how that looks. It's definitely looking readable when it gets small. It's definitely bold enough to like I mean, look at that. You can still read that. Even with the weird shapes, you can still read. It's still pretty legible. Sometimes I do like to like experiment with illegibility with my typefaces. <laughs> you know, like I like to see like how far I can push it. Um, it's kind of like this drawing. I don't know. I don't think we'll explore this one as much, but I just wanted to keep it in just to see. Um, but yeah. So, so Paula, you do have a Patreon, right? What if you made yes. your typeface available on that? These are great suggestions oh, yeah. coming in from the chat. That is a good idea. I definitely like to make exclusive content for my patrons over there. So that would be a really good idea. Oh, we have a name suggestion. Name it Tim. <laughs> That's so Tim? cute. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> Yeah, I love this. It's so like, I don't know, it's so different from um, stuff I've done recently. So I, I like that I've gone in a different direction for this one, for sure. I wonder if this one, let's just trace this one to see if it's going to be something we want to do. If not, we will move on from it. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> just to see. If you never try, you'll never know. Exactly. And then I'm going to think about it. <laughs> I'm going to think if this was the actual letter I should have done. Again, I'm so chaotic with my pen tool. I just love clicking things until I figure it out. 
exactly the shape I want. <laughs> but also, you don't have to be perfect with the pen tool because you can always go back and fix it. I always like to remind people of that. And there's this really great tool called Smooth, which, you oh, know, yeah. gets rid of all your imperfections. So that yeah. is a hot tip. Yes, for sure. Where is that tool? Ooh, you find that under the, so there's a pencil tool right under the rectangular shape. So if you long, yeah, if you long press on it, there's a smooth tool. Ooh. So you can probably just keep it selected and then smoothen out the points. You, you'll have to probably select the um, the line, the oh, shape. Okay. Okay. So let's select. Yes. Oh, okay. <gasps> you have taught me something amazing today, <laughs> Tanya. <laughs> that was amazing. I've never used that tool, actually. <laughs> we live for tricks. Yes, literally. Anything to make things easier, better whatever you need yes i love that we all work so differently too like as designers like i've never used that but you are i'm assuming using it all the time <laughs> and here i am not even knowing it exists like that's so funny i just love how different everyone is in their in their process oh we have newer faces in the chat richard says hey everyone and actually for those who are just joining us right now we are here with paula casa and working on a branding identity project if you're on YouTube, just come over to Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live to be a part of the chat and view this really beautiful process. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Richard. I've heard that you just joined. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Gary has a question. Any yeah. tip that drastically improved your life with Illustrator? Hmm, you know, um, you have the smooth tool, but I have been using the curve, this curve tool. Is that what it's actually called? Um, that one helps me so much with my lines as well. And it's, I've, it's like, I never knew that these things existed until recently. Like you would think I never pay attention, <laughs> but like this smooth tool is amazing. Like this, yeah, that you just showed me, but like the curve tool will um like you can click into these and just start pulling like all of these which are great it like rounds corners that you need rounded um so that really helps me because sometimes i'll just go really fast with my pen tool in illustrator like whatever i'm doing i'll just go in really fast and quick and then i'll just come back and be like oh that corner i wanted rounded you know i'll come back and fix it that way and i find it really really helpful that is a really good one. I've never used that specific tool, but I'm going to yeah. check it out. Yeah, it definitely helps. Like here, like if I were to click here, because it's not a rounded point, like, oh, I think I have to select into it first. But like I click in and it can just, it'll start rounding all the corners. Um, Of course, it doesn't work as soon as I try to tell you about it. But yeah, <laughs> it literally does. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> but yeah. um, I definitely don't like this. It's too... Too crazy. We're gonna we're gonna go back to what we know. <laughs> the original one we made. This one definitely. Anthony asks, have you ever used Illustrator on the iPad? Oh, I actually have just like once or twice. Um I found that the the type, like actually using like fonts and stuff was really nice, like using and changing the size and moving it around. I actually really liked it. But yeah, I have a just like a standard iPad. I don't have the pro or anything. So it's still really helpful when I use it on there. That's amazing. Paola, yeah. would you like to give a recap of what you're working on? We have a question which says, what's the name of the project you're creating? Okay, yeah. So Fold is what we're making. So we're, right now we're making the logo for it. Um, it's a recycled clothing brand where you would bring in your clothes, donate. Um, they're going to curate things for the store and be at vendor events and just really be in the community. Kind of a secondhand shop that's in out there with the community doing things for the people. So that's kind of the concept we're going with here. Um, but yeah, I also wanted to add about the brand too. Um, it would have an online shop as well where you could get like a styling service. Um, so if you wanted to like put in your size on the online shop, 
<laughs> shop that doesn't exist because this is our imagined brand. But yes, um, if you wanted to put in your size, they would send you a box of clothes in your size and style that you've specified. Um, so I thought that was kind of an interesting concept too, to put into this brand. Um, and we will work on some of those um, elements in tomorrow's stream as well. So I'm excited. <laughs> we have a new font name suggestion. Relaxy. Okay. Relaxy? <laughs> oh my God. So cute. That's awesome. That reminds me of um, Friends when uh, Rachel and Phoebe are like, we're coming up with a massage brand and they're like, <laughs> it's travel, she like travel massage, relaxy taxi. <laughs> I always remember that because she's like, it's not relaxy taxi, it's relaxy taxi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or like a relaxy cab or whatever they were saying. It's so funny. I'm obsessed. Ooh. I'm obsessed with friends. <laughs> Another font name suggestion is TaylorMade. Ooh, TaylorMade. Anita. Ooh. Thank you, Anika. That's cool because it goes with fashion. You know, like tailoring. Yes, she says cause, because clothes are clothes and fold. And yeah. Yeah. Love that. I really do love how weird this is. <laughs> if we're going with, I feel like we're going with weird. We're leaning into it. <laughs> I really do like this. I want to see just a few more things in here. Yeah, see, shortening it was just not going to work because this curve is so satisfying to me right here. So I'm not, let's not do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is kind of where I'm thinking the logo should be. Um, I also want to look at some typefaces um, for like, if we're making this a logo, like it can stand alone as this, but also have like a tagline underneath. So let's do that. Let's move some things out of the way. I'm kind of chaotic with my workspace. I do, um, <laughs> I do keep everything around, like hanging around. Chaos is good. A lot of yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> you need that. It's all right. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry for looking so chaotic to everyone. No, um. But yeah, with this one, I am going to keep it in black for now, even though I don't think it's going to stay black. Um, definitely not. But I'm keeping it black because that's the easiest way to work for me. Like, I'd rather just look at it flat and just assess in black and white and then color. We're, we don't need to get distracted quite yet. We will. <laughs> we will in a bit, but we're not going to overwhelm ourselves and not actually look at the design elements because we're too distracted by bright colors right off the bat <laughs> with oh, logo design have, can get crazy we have richard and orko brobo um obsessing over your design videos they're both followers and they love the content you put out oh that's awesome that's yes. so cool um yeah i was figuring that some of them some of the people watching would be from my channel and it was kind of making me feel a little bit more like calm about it because i'm like you guys you know me <laughs> this isn't just all new people <laughs> like it's kind of funny we so also have voodoo well saying font name as slider like s-l-i-d-r but pronounced as slider so slider. the shape of the letters remind her of a playground slide of a slide sorry wow oh, that's fun I love these ideas. These everyone's coming up with really creative names <laughs> that I wouldn't even think of for this. Um, yeah, right now we're gonna uh, look at some fonts. So I'm just gonna look into all the fonts I have on my computer, and we're gonna get going into some like the tagline here. I have on the on the side. I have recycled, curated, accessible. Um, so I think that's kind of a good thing to have just underneath if you were looking at the brand, especially if you're going um, like around a flea market. Like I said, this could like they could be like, a booth at a flea market or a vendor event. So if you didn't know, at least you could read that tagline and say like, oh, what's this? I'm interested. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funky fold. Another option. Funky fold. Paola, That's... people are going crazy. It's oh going crazy. We have a lot this of names. This chat is crazy. <laughs> you guys are amazing. You guys are so creative. Seriously, like, uh, I love it. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
definitely not feeling for the typeface underneath or that just the typeface being used in the brand. Definitely do not want a serifed font. Um, I just don't think it goes with the brand at all. Like if you're going to do that funky logo that's on the screen right now, we're not going to have, you know, Baskerville. This is just, it's not going to work. So I think definitely we need to focus in more um, sans serif fonts um, and probably a little bit wider than more condensed because, yeah, I just don't think condensed is going to work either because it might just overwhelm the shape because they're such thick letters, um, which I... I love, but yeah, we're definitely gonna have to go with something sans serif and a little bit wider. So let's write that out. I don't think capitals either. I'm thinking mix. Oh, let's expand that box. Anthony says, truth be told, I'm from a YouTube channel and a Patreon. Wow. Anthony, I do recognize your name. I mean, obviously, I could have been any Anthony. I, was, I didn't want to just assume you're that person. But hi, Anthony, because I do know you. Yeah, he's on my Patreon. I love that people are coming over from there. That's awesome. Of course, Helvetica. I'm just going to put it in the mix, you know? <laughs> Helvetica, the most used, but it's just so, it's so tried and true, <laughs> you know? It just looks great. It never lets you down. It really doesn't. Like, I oh, I keep coming back to it. And especially lately, I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why do I <laughs> Why do I just want to use Helvetica and nothing else? For being such a, like I just said, I mean, I'm such a type person. Like, I love typography, love fonts. And then I'm like, use Helvetica, guys. <laughs> but hey, I'm not to hate on any single typeface. I think they're all, they all have their place. Orko Probo says thin scripts might also work, even though I came in a bit late and I have to catch up, but that's a great suggestion. That is a really good suggestion. Don't worry, you're not coming in too late. You're fine. <laughs> this is this one's called Fenwick, and I just have like so obsessed with it lately. I don't know. There's something about it with, with those letters. They just look so good. Augustina has a tip. Paula, you can use the filters on the type panel to make your life easier. Oh, wait, what does that mean? Oh, filters on the type panel. Huh. Oh, the type panel. Okay, 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 okay. I, yeah, you know what? <laughs> people are, people have so many more suggestions for me. I'm just the type of person who works so slowly. I just like really have my own way oh, of we, working. We, we have great type suggestions. We have Sophia Pro, Poppins, Avenir. Ooh, anything but Papyrus. Oh, yes, absolutely. We're not using Papyrus. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> Avenir, I love. I love coming back to Avenir with my projects. Because look at how many different weights I have of Avenir. So <laughs> well many stocked ones. up. Yeah, <laughs> this one is definitely one I've used. Like, I've used it in so many projects, especially in college. It was my go-to. I always remember that. I wonder if it should be thicker or thinner next to that. Probably thicker. I don't want to overwhelm it because like that does look nice. Hmm. We are go? one hour into the show and we are watching Paula design a beautiful, sustainable brand, you know, called Fold. And whoever's on YouTube, come here on the hands. This is where all the cool kids are hanging out. <laughs> I'm doing the chat with all our suggestions. Yeah, this is where we're having a great chat party. So that's amazing. <laughs> Everyone is really coming up with amazing ideas. I, yeah, I don't know. I really like the ones that I've already put out there. But I did have, um, hmm. I did have one in mind. Now I can't remember the name of it, of course. I have some crazy typefaces too. I just love like, I love using like all types of things with type, like um, like Casanova. Some of that stuff I have is like licensed for um, personal use. So like Casanova is a fun one to use for my personal work, like my imagined brands and stuff, because I'm just putting it out there like 
for fun. You know, I'm really making these fun projects that are just like for no other reason other than I just love it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I just decided to make a skincare brand today. Oh, I decided to make a clothing brand today. Um, so yeah, I go, I go crazy with the fonts. <laughs> But a lot of my work is not in like my portfolio. Um, I definitely need to update. Definitely. <laughs> Updating one's portfolio is a whole new ball game. <laughs> yeah. Designing so overwhelming. Yourself, yeah, that's the hardest I feel, designing for yourself. Yeah, you always want to change. When you're a designer, you always want to change to the next thing and the next thing where you see something <laughs> and you're like, how are they doing that one? Like, should I have my branding like that? Like. Um, I've definitely changed a few times with like my YouTube logo and things like that, but I think I've like settled on like, I've said set I've settled on a specific vibe at least. So it's like, if I take a new photo, it can go with the logo. I try to make sure that I'm not overdoing it, you know? Um, but yeah, I don't want to overdo it with changing it every single minute. And then people don't even know where to find me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because <laughs> I'm like who is this she's completely different than a minute ago um knockout I have amazing typeface knockout is an awesome typeface if anyone is looking for something that's a perfect sans serif I think knockout's awesome oh wow love yeah, a good typeface <laughs> I love this one I know that this is a lot going through a lot of different typefaces, but a lot of the time that is the life of a designer, it's at least my my job. <laughs> if I'm working with clients, like a lot of the time I am doing this and looking through, looking through typefaces, deciding what to pick next, deciding what's going to go best for their brand. Because, you know, type can make or break a brand. That is so true. <laughs> We have Jen from Dominican Republic saying hi and saying it's their first Adobe Live and they're excited that it's with you. Oh gosh, thank you for being here. That's so awesome. I'm excited to be here. I think we're all excited to be here today. Yep. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> this is my first. Tanya's been here before. She's a veteran now. She knows what it's what it's like. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Some of these are obviously too way too crazy. I mean, you don't want to put funky with funky trying to be funky. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't want overly done where it's like, this is all funky <laughs> and then it's lost and, you know, not even, not even readable at that point. Ooh, Mr. Eves is something I definitely come back to also. I love Mr. Eves. <laughs> it's such a fun one yeah um, but yeah this one's i don't think this one's right for the for this brand but it does it's a really good one if anyone i get all of my fonts most of the time from adobe fonts and at least i know the licensing on those and everything so hmm. i think oh, i'm we good with questions. the options oh sorry sorry i'm oh, interrupting you your good. No, no, <laughs> we, we have a question <clears throat> so how do you come up with made up briefs to practice Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually a good question because I feel like a lot of people probably don't know how to come up with this stuff or haven't even thought about coming up with their own brands. Um, but for me, I am just always thinking of like, how would this look if it were a real brand? Like, how would it look on a billboard, a poster, a sign? Like, how would it just look in real life if I were a person going to this place or if I were a person buying from that brand? And um, I start there. <laughs> I think about that like realistically because I don't want to think of like what's it going to look like on social media because that's not the main point. You know, I don't want to think about how's this going to look on Instagram um, because that's the last thing I need to think about. Of course, it's going to look great by the end because I made it if it was real, you know, if it looked real. So um, by the end of it, I'll be happy to put it on Instagram. <laughs> um, but yeah, like with that, I just come up with a name from there. And I know that can be the hardest part, deciding a name for your brand. Um, I I do research like with my skincare brand, Amarus. It's a French word for means in love. 
And I was like, you know what? Let's do that. <laughs> like, that's cute. Like, it's French. Great. Like, in love, in love with my skin. That's kind of the the thought process. So that's how I got there. And then for Fold, I just started thinking of clothes and um, just, you know, that type of concept. And I was talking to my friend. I was talking to my husband. I'm like, what should this be? What should this be? We're just going through words. And it's like, no idea is a bad idea when you're just going through these concepts and brainstorming and stuff. So yeah, just start thinking. And I wanted to say too, if you guys, like if anyone out there wants to make this brand themselves and make their own fold logo, like do that. Cause you, you know, none of these are real. You can have fun with this one. So yeah. Um, just to everyone out there watching use fold and, you know, make your own secondhand brand and see, I want to see what you would do with that. Like tag me in it on Instagram or whatever. I want to (laughs) see. I think that's really exciting, you know, opening up to everyone, their interpretations, yeah. their take on it. I think that's amazing. Yeah, that would, that would be so fun, like, by the end of this, too. Like, I mean, this is two days. We're creating a brand. You guys can create your own brand as well and, like, see what kind of elements you would make for it and, like, what you would do if you had this type of brand. I mean, it's really, it's not a real brand. Like, it's <laughs> it's everyone's, you know. I kind of love this. I didn't even know it was going to come together, but... It really is. Which one is this? Avenir. That suggestion. You guys are smart. You're smart out there. I'm telling you. <laughs> Avenir was a good. I didn't even. I forgot about Avenir. I scrolled right past it. And of course, it's the one I am intrigued by. <laughs> but yeah, especially when you're making your own brands, like I guess answering that question more, if you're making your own brand, ask your friends, ask your family, ask around, like, be like, what would you call this? Or what would you, would you go to something called this or like buy from a company called this? Like, it's fun to do your own like research, even if it's not for a real product or something like it's, it's fun. It's a good exercise, especially like this type of stuff is great for practicing, you know, creating imagined brands is great for learning how to, how to even do it, how to be a brand designer. Because now I've kind of like fallen into that. Like I said, like I just never prepared myself to be a brand designer. I think I was so interested in it, obviously, with school and being a graphic designer. But I didn't know what kind of designer I would be. (laughs) And now I'm like, I'm a brand designer. It's awesome. Like I, I make things for clients. I do this type of work all the time. And a lot of that helps when I'm making my own fun brands just for fun. Like it's still great. And that's where you can experiment so more, like so much more. You have like yeah. full agency to take it in whichever direction you want it to go in, which is great. Okay, so I'm really loving this. I want to start looking into some like color ideas. I kind of want to make like a little color palette we can kind of bounce off of. Um, when I make color palettes, I make little circles. <laughs> And then I, and then I make like the palette just off, even off the page. Sometimes I'm like off the artboard, not even working, just working in the margins. Like that's my, (laughs) my process. But yeah, I love making these circles and just seeing what works with colors. Um, I was thinking for this type of brand for colors, I, it's so bold and funky, but I don't want to take it to too bright I don't know I'm thinking something like a pinky red or an orangey red maybe more um but I'm that might be too aggressive I feel like I really like to think about color theory when I design I really like to think about like what people will take away from my work and I don't want it to be ever too loud (laughs) and that's just my personal preference like um I'm not a very loud person I'm I know I can talk I know we've been talking this entire time but I'm very like calm energy most of the time if you actually like talk to me in person and or you're around me 24 7 I'm definitely a calm person so I like I I just like to have something that's like accessible like I mean it goes with the words for this brand right so we're thinking like unique accessible affordable sustainable so I don't want to do anything that's too bright and bold I want to do kind of a mix of of that I'm really liking like light purple pinky colors right now too 
Um, so let's just keep exploring this. I think, I think that's good. <laughs> keep exploring. I that's think subtle, she be. subtle is a really good like idea because you have this, you know, really uh, powerful logo type on top. So it'll complement each other really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I definitely think that purple is very, it's a very approachable color. Um, it's not as... I don't know. Pink is pink is my favorite color. <laughs> my nails are pink. I love pink. Everything's pink in my life. But <laughs> um, I think purple is like kind of a less feminine way and in an obvious way, I guess, because pink is more of an obvious color that you would think feminine, um, which, you know, it doesn't need to be. But I think that's how people associate, especially with like color theory emotions like emotional reactions what do we think you know what i'm you know what i mean so i don't want it to be too polarizing for an audience especially if this is a brand for a lot of different types of people um i'm also really really loving like like forest green um almost like emerald green i really love jewel tones um because they are so I don't know they're not bold but they're like they are bold because they're <laughs> they're deep you know you're not doing like light 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 which is with design I think sometimes we only think in terms of like light because we don't want to overwhelm a design or something or you know weigh it down whatever but but green is so so anchoring I love it let's make more colors <laughs> let's do more <laughs> Yeah, the mm. green is really nice and saturated. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working in RGB also, just to let everyone know. Um, I am going to make a business card in here too, because we're just going to put everything into mock-ups and nothing's like actually being printed. I'm just going to keep this artboard in RGB. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it's like, it's all a mock-up. It's all for fun. So I like to just work in what I want to work in. If I was printing obviously like when I did my actual packaging design for my skincare brand that I made I did do CMYK to make sure that those colors really stood out and were actually going to print correctly <laughs> as they were supposed to be oh we have a great question from Gary any yeah. organization tips because my illustrator is a hot mess <laughs> <laughs> Gary I get it I get you um organization tips I try to stay organized most of the time i do things in multiple files um for the purposes of this i wanted to keep it all in one just so everyone could see um but i do make sure to like you know when i hit edit artboards i create new artboards and i do everything kind of on its own canvas um today i'm just feeling a little more chaotic i think <laughs> but but yeah, I, I like to keep things like on their artboard so I know exactly where everything is and I name it accordingly, like each file, name it accordingly and keep it in a folder. Um, I don't want to overwhelm myself with the amount of things I have open or the amount of things I have called final, <laughs> final version or whatever. Like I don't want to, I don't want to stress myself out, you know, um, which can happen very easily. Hmm. I'm like, I love the orangey and red, but I just feel like it's so, it's like, I always want to go for it. And then I, I pull back right at the last second. <laughs> and I'm like, nope, don't do red, don't do purple. You know, I changed my mind so much, but I'm just, I'm loving these tones because it just, it feels, it feels like warm and approachable, you know, like a community should be like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, it's it's feeling very, very nice. I think approachable is just the perfect way of describing it. But because they do, right? They they look very friendly. Like you would you would want to know about this brand. So yeah, they're not, yeah. not I, intimidating at all. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not intimidating. I think that's a great way to put it because you know, with this type of this type of brand, you want it to be one for everybody. So any type of person. And then two, you want it to be for like, like, like I said, curation, like you want it to be something that is more trendy on the nose, something that is up to date. Um, because a lot of those organizations, like, you know, in the market research, um, which we can go back to real quick, just because I don't want to, 
I don't want anyone to feel like they missed out, um, but like in our market research here, which let me just scroll back up. Some of these brands are less focused on being trendy or being now because they are just like, like substantiated organizations, you know, they don't need to change. And a lot of them, you know, whether they have, you know, religious affiliation or, you know, sustainable or for the planet or for specific reasons, like, so like souls for souls being for shoes, um, you know, they have their purpose and that's, that's fine. It's just like, they don't need to change or be up to date first for like trendy people or whatever it is. Like that's not their main focus and that's fine. That's perfect for for those brands, you know what I mean? And for us, I think we definitely want to make it like for people who want to like dress cool, but like want to do it affordably or like want to, you know, want to be good for the planet and their decisions and come in and like, you know, buy secondhand or donate their clothes to a secondhand shop. Like, you know, those are the things that are important to people. So if it's important to them, then, you know, they'll want to shop there. So I just made this with the Pathfinder. I love the Pathfinder tool, by the way, my fave. <laughs> my favorite thing to to click on every day with my projects. I'm just like, minus front, do that, like copy, you know, like delete. Um, but yeah, that I just created that as one shape. So now we can just, um, let's apply some color on it and see what we're thinking. Um, let's also edit the artboard because I wanna, I want this to look a little bit different so we can all see what we're, what we're working with let's bring it down here we go so yeah let's bring this over here and then actually let's remove that right now just for now and we can just try different colors and see how it's looking so eyedropper See, it's always the red. I love the red. And then I put it on and I'm like, it's not it. <laughs> it's like something is something is telling me, like, don't do it. It's too bold. Like, it's just my personality. I don't know what it is. It's too bold for me. <laughs> of course, I love the lightest color, like the most pastel color. That's so me. If you guys watch my channel, whoever's watching that watches my channel, you know I'm always using pastels. I can't get away from it. It's it's within me. That is a more subtle red, though. I agree. That's, yeah, yeah. I actually do like that. Okay. <laughs> I want to try all the colors but not this red. This red was just too much. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's a lot to look at here. Definitely a lot to look at. Hmm. I think the color really brought it to life. It made it feel like um, the black made it feel very grounded the bold letters and the wideness of the shapes, but this is making it feel like with the color, it's really making it feel like it's bouncing around almost. I feel like it's jumping, <laughs> which I like. Oh, so many to choose from. These all look what, so good. What does the chat think? I feel like Ooh. I want to know. I want to know what their thoughts on the colors are because I I trust everyone's opinion. Voodoo Well says, I'm the same way with using purple. I am purple. It's everywhere in my work. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love when people have a color, like it's such a personality thing. They're like, this is my color and I wear it with everything. Like, it's so cool to have a color. Like you really know yourself if you know your color and your thing. It's like, I love pink, but I don't think I wear it like that much. I, you know, I just literally just have my nails painted. That's probably it. And my blanket on my bed, but, but like, I love pink this is my favorite color, but I don't wear it or anything. But the people who like have a color that they wear and they love, it's like, you know it you know who you are and i respect that <laughs> oh we have a vote for the third purple like the one in the middle oh this one like the third color yes should we yeah should we Ooh. like number the purples gary says like bright one. purple anthony's <laughs> leaning towards the green 
Mm, okay. So we love everything. That's what we're trying to say, Paula. <laughs> See, people are not saying the red. This is what I'm saying. I. It's something about the red. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's not my favorite. Um, but yeah, let's see. This is always how my workspace ends up looking. It's like the logo just repeated, 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 <laughs> like all over the place. Oh, Ryan says the logo for Salvation Army is red. So maybe that's something to consider. Oh yeah, that's true. That was Ryan. Interesting. Yeah. That's my husband's name suspiciously. Oh. Was that my husband in the chat? He's, I know he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> he says green. Green. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so curious why everyone's opinions on it, especially let's, once we like get into this part too, like I want to see how that looks, but I feel like the green on the small scale is not going to translate as much because you can't really see it. Like the letters, they really look like, they look almost black there. Um, but I just want to see. Richard says purple is loyalty color. Tiffany says oh. green. Noelle says red. And Jen says team purple. Team purple? <laughs> oh no, people are creating teams. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> team purple. I love that. Oh my God. Um, wow. Okay. So, wow. Time is flying by also, may I add. I was like... Yes. I was like, I had so much stuff prepared just in case I had more time. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, just in case, just in case, this is just in case. And of course I spend so much time picking colors and fonts and the things that are like, I mean, so important to this, to the brand, obviously, but of course I spend so much time on it. Like, <laughs> I get so distracted. Mm, okay. Let's see. I want to see this in I want this to be black and then I want to see this in the purple because I love the purple as well like that is that's very cool I do love the purple as well but even that bold purple let's see you know what we could do we could do brand elements with still some of these colors you know what I mean so some of this could be in a different color depending on um, what sign it's going to be on like we are going to create business card, poster, um, some signage, you know, so it could, it could change. The color could change. Um, I just don't want to pick too many colors for the actual logo, but we can use it. Like if we want to use this really bright purple, um, on the logo, then we could use maybe like the subtle purple for background elements on the poster later on. So we could definitely do something like that as well. That's a great idea. I think that, yeah. that would work really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I just don't want to like overwhelm it and be like, okay, it's all going to be, <laughs> we're going to use every single color. <laughs> like, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to use every single color, but definitely elements of it. So I love using green um, in the, in the background of things or in elements of design. So if not the typeface, we'll probably use it for, for another aspect um, as we get further into the project. But yeah, look at how bright that purple is. Like when you put it on the the dark background it's still popping like so loud <laughs> it's so cool <laughs> uh, but yeah okay wow this is blowing my mind i love it oh what um, if so what if for the tagline we keep a darker color like the dark green but for fold we choose either for, like either of the two purples like maybe the light one and then sometimes you have the dark one coming in like as an accent color but oh yeah 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 like um even this yeah, I see. Like this. Oh, oh. <gasps> I think we are on to something here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally know what you mean. I just want to know if it should be like this way or... It definitely adds a layer to the brand. I think that would be really, really visually interesting. Let's see. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. You guys, what's happening? I'm loving this. <laughs> and then both team purples will win <laughs> on what they got. Look at that over the white. Oh, wow. That, yeah, that's really cool. Ooh, love, yeah, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. love how 3D it's looking. 
Yeah, it's looking really like 3D. Which, which looks yeah, great. which is definitely something I don't do a lot. I am yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like more flat with my work. So that's really cool. I feel like this is something new for me. That could, yeah, this definitely works. I love this. I'm gonna pull it over here. Yeah, even as you get like pull out, you still see that element of 3D. Yeah. See how crazy that is? Wow. Chris, wow. Uh, oh, Chris and Tiffany say, I like the 3D effect. Oh, thank you, Chris and Tiffany. Okay, I'm I'm glad people are agreeing then in the, in the uh, chat. Team Purple hashtag is still going on. Just, just putting it out there. <laughs> We guys. Have- <laughs> ah, okay, good. I picked Team Purple. I'm on Team Purple now. I, I'm converted. I'm on Team Purple. I promise. <laughs> um. Okay. Wow. I I'm really happy with this. Um. We. It's already wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. We worked on that for a long time, but that's good because we can get working into the um, into the business card that I wanted to do. Um. And just start working in just the design part of it because we can do mock-ups we can do all that tomorrow so i'm you know i'm good with that um so let's do a new artboard and let's make that business card size <laughs> so this is going to be a lot smaller than our giant artboard that we have up right now obviously this is 10 by 13 right now <laughs> but we're gonna do three inches by two and a half Oh, is it? Is it three and a half? It's two by three and a half. I always forget. I always do it the opposite way, of course, the first time. That's always what I. Yeah, there we go. There's the standard business card size. So we're going to do this and we're going to create a front and a back the business card. Now that we've kind of nailed down this, which I'm really excited about. I just love it. It's just making me so happy <laughs> to look at it. It is. It's, okay. it's like, it is really approachable. Like someone said, what loyalty, purple is loyalty, yes. which is, I love color theory. I love thinking about all the emotions that colors have. Um, so that's awesome. Love it. So the point of the business card also is to have it up for like if you were to go to a flea market or if you were even to go into the store you would want to pick this up just in case you need to remember it later or you you know want to know the place where you go to donate your clothes um especially when you go to flea markets or like just vendor events like whenever i go to like artist fairs and stuff i'm always picking up everyone's everyone's card just to make sure i have their info and like i just want to know you know <laughs> i just want to know what everyone's doing so that's why i I find business cards important just for that aspect. So I don't know. I think maybe for the business card, we're going to do it without this part, the tagline, because I think it's a little bit um, redundant because if you're picking up the card, you do know what you're, you're looking for. Wow. That looks so good already. It does look really good. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> it's like throwing me off how how we got to here because I feel like at first it was just like, I mean, think about it. We literally, whoa, I just turned my entire, how did I do that? How did I do that? Is there a way to do, to fix it? Oh, can anyone help us from the chat to fix yeah. this? How do we fix it tilting? How did I just do that with my fingers? I'm like trying to do it again with my fingers, oh. but I don't... <laughs> That is such an odd problem to have. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone know? Chat, help us out. Help us out. I could Google it, I guess, too. <laughs> oh, Voodoo, oh. Yeah, Voodoo Val has a question. Paula, yeah. what is your favorite project you've ever worked on? Whoever. Um, I. That's a hard one. <laughs> I have so many projects that I love. Um, but one of my most proud ones is um, a travel guide that I made for Colombia because uh, that's where my family's from. I'm Colombian American. So I just like I decided to make it for fun. It really wasn't for any specific reason, but I used all photos that me and my family have taken and I did a whole layout of like a travel guide, like magazine almost. And I printed it and I just loved it. Like I was so proud of it because I just feel like 
I, well, I love doing editorial because that means I get to work with more type and layout and everything like that. But, but yeah, it just, it was so, it was such a proud moment. Like I was like, oh, I love this. Like Columbia, it just looked so, so beautiful. So that's one of my faves. Oh, we this... might have some solutions. Okay. Um, Chris says, yep, reset, rotate view. And Ooh. yes, Anthony says the it. same view and then reset, rotate view. So oh, okay. View. view. And mm. reset, rotate. Oh, reset, rotate. Oh. <gasps> Thank you so much, guys. That was so helpful. Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did. It was, I swear it was like my finger. I went like that too much with my finger on the trackpad, which yes, I use a trackpad most of the time when I work, but don't hate me. <laughs> but yeah, but I think I just twisted it. That is so funny. Thank you so much. I'm going to remember that because I swear I'm going to, I'm going to do that again at some point. I know it. <laughs> um, okay. So I kind of like that this is at the bottom, like toward the bottom of the card, kind of like that. Um, but yeah, I, let's work on the back of the card where all the information would go. And let's also move these over just so I can be closer. <laughs> yeah, so here's some of our information. Um, so that would be the information that goes on the business card. So like the address, which I've just made up, I just put it in Brooklyn, New York. Because I was thinking um, for the flea market, like if you were to advertise that they're at a flea market, I just thought Brooklyn flea because I know that flea market. So um, <laughs> I just placed it in a place and made their little social media handle, their website, like where you would go to find them. So we can add that into here. So this is what we're working with. Avenir medium is the one we're using. So I think we might stick to that for the entire type, like the brand's typeface. Um, I think we should stick to Avenir just for consistency. So let me delete this. And I love, I love working in um, Illustrator with typefaces like you wouldn't think that it's the best place to work but i just love it because there's so much you can do like so much manipulation of the text um <laughs> it's just so fun like i love it so we're gonna make this definitely small because if it's fitting on a three and a half inch little card we don't want it to be overwhelming the card you know so this would be like the address of their storefront as well just to mention What's the type size that you're going to keep for that? So I'm thinking nine for this, okay. just because it's very, nine's readable, you know, yes, like when sure. you see 12 point font as like the standard, um, that is even kind of big. And I always bring it down to like 10.5 <laughs> if I'm like want to <laughs> read something. I just feel like that's a readable like place, but nine is like small, but still readable. Um, so let's keep. Let's write out all the information. So it would be like at fold just to know like where to go follow them. And um, I might keep that part separate because I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to put it on here yet. I can't get over the logo. I'll be very honest with you. I've been staring at that. That looks you so love it? beautiful. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. I'm, I'm loving it too. I keep thinking about the color choices that we got to. I'm like, how did I? whoa that was that was amazing like i love i love the choices we came up with <laughs> foldfashion.com would be their website again not a real brand we're making a we're making a designed brand this is all just concept um i love making imagined brands um like i mentioned earlier but if you missed it we're making not a real established brand this is an imagined one <laughs> so let's see hmm I'm thinking maybe I should put like a line or something um, on this, on the back of the card. I have yet to place those things, so don't don't judge yet. But <laughs> um, let's see. There we go. Stroke, and then the stroke. I I think one is sometimes a little too intense, um, but it could kind of mimic. We could go like even more extreme if we want to do like a thick line because it can kind of mimic the boldness of 
the the type based logo um we could do something a little bit more thick um just because you know it's a little more funky it, i think if we were to do something really thin because i usually will take it down from one and do like half or um 0.75 point i usually do stuff like that but i think that's because i usually do more things that are like almost like elegant like i i like that kind of like brand vibe um but this one's definitely not elegant like i wouldn't call it elegant so i'm <laughs> i think i might do like a thicker a thicker line um, just because the shape is like, it's so bold. I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling that, but maybe two. It's kind of cool, you know? I also want to just make sure this is aligned. Horizontal line center and then vertical line center. I always like using these just to make sure that I'm doing, doing things on the right part of the artboard that I actually want. So I'm going to bring that to to like mm, a little bit past one third of the card. I think it's, it's technically a third. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just want to make sure that it's breaking up like in that way. Um, and then their website, I'm going to put over on this side of the card. And then I'm going to actually zoom in. I'm going to align these things. Do you also get caught up in aligning like even like the every yes. little part of the type? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little crazy uh, with that. <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely that type of person. Like, but I do want to make sure, you know, you just you always want to make sure that it's like you're thinking about that, especially if you're doing like this type of work in Illustrator. Um, it doesn't just have like the guides to tell you that you're lining everything up. Like it's I mean, it's more for like vectorizing that type of stuff. So obviously when you're working in this, you want to be more mindful of where you're placing things because you really are creating that layout. Um, so it's important. Like for this, sometimes I'll just do this. Like I'll bring up guides and kind of create my own little spacing and then I'll unlock the guides. Um, Ooh, and just bring them over it. here. Yeah. And just kind of copy and bring them to the exact same level so then we can kind of like make this the exact same distance and then you don't have to overthink it with the with the sizing you know you've just kind of like thrown it together and you're like okay i got the layout like i know that's right so yeah those unlocked guides and then i always lock them which the keyboard shortcut for that is really helpful that is like my favorite one um option command and then that little semicolon or colon button Ooh. option command semicolon will lock and unlock your guides for you so you can oh. just keep moving them and then stop moving them and then keep moving them yeah so hopefully that helps someone did it help you yeah i did not know that <laughs> oh, okay option yeah that's a really good keyword shortcut okay. i don't even know where it is in the like in the actual program because i always use the shortcut now like option command semicolon it's the best because then you can just keep working like right now if i were to highlight a bunch of stuff it wouldn't highlight the the guide because I have it locked. But then as soon as I hit that sh shortcut, I can highlight everything and move it with along with. Wait, could you could you do that again so that everyone in yeah. the chat can see it? Because that yeah, was so one helpful tip. OK, <laughs> so right now I'm highlighting like if I'm highlighting over a guide that I have placed, it's locked. So right now you can't you can't highlight it. It won't move if you start moving things around the guide. Um, but then if you do option command semicolon, so if I hit those on my keyboard, I will now hover over everything and then that guide will move along with your work. So those guides will move. So if that's something you don't want, make sure to lock them, but the same button will lock and unlock those same keyboard shortcut. That is perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's actually so helpful. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what I'm thinking for the business card. Um, but I don't know. I kind of want to try some other like layouts. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just want to try like new business card layouts with business cards. I recently did a video on business cards, but I was really like emphasizing that with business cards, like you can have fun. You can do it vertically. You can do an odd shape, even if you don't do this standard business card size. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can make it shiny when you actually print. You can make it foil. You can do like so much stuff. So I just like to like 
I don't know. I like to experiment with business cards designs because you can do so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't want to overwhelm it. So um, we might add something. Did I write anything else over here? No, I didn't. We might add something over here, actually. Like maybe we should add like donate your clothes or something. I feel like, like we could add some. action. Yeah, I think that would be like more. It would be, yeah, more eye capturing. It would remind you why you have this card in your hand, in your possession, why you picked it up. Um, so we could do something like mm, all caps, maybe? Donate, or we could do donate and shop, maybe? Something like that. I think that's that would be good. Um, so let's change this up. Oh, okay. So we have 15 minutes to go. Paola, would you like to give everyone a recap of what you've done and yeah. kind of give an idea about tomorrow's plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So again, like we've talked about throughout the stream is that we're doing a recycled clothing brand that's donation-based, more trendy, kind of curated, but really accessible to the community. Um, so really for everybody. And then uh, we started with making a logo. We've <laughs> ended up with this amazing uh here let's unlock that guide so we can <laughs> take it away um but yeah we we started out with this type-based logo and we created to what it is now we picked some colors we did all of that all of the font choices my favorite part <laughs> of creating a brand um and then now we are moving on to the business card which is one of the elements we're gonna put into mock-ups and stuff so tomorrow's stream also we're gonna create a poster we're going to create some like tissue paper pattern for their online orders for the brand some clothing tags stuff like that and then we're going to put it all into mock-ups in photoshop so yeah it'll be really fun so join us <laughs> tomorrow for that because mock-ups really bring the brand to life definitely so i'm excited to to see how this all pans out um yeah so that's basically the recap here over here i have some elements for all the all the stuff we're going to work on tomorrow like images and stuff and then the mock-up so i'm really i'm really excited to see where this brand expands into tomorrow for sure <laughs> so yeah i do really like this layout i i think we'll we'll do donate and shop um and we might change it to something maybe thicker like black a veneer black and we can change this i'm thinking maybe make this a little bit bigger so that it lines up with this part and then let's change the, there we go, like that. It's a nice tight unit, that looks good. Yeah. And I don't want it to like overtake the entire card, but I do want it to be pretty bold. And I think having it over here would be a good idea just to add visual interest. And then that's the main thing you see. So like with hierarchy, um, with typography, you want to make sure that the the boldest thing, the biggest thing is the thing that they're looking at first. Like that's that's just human nature. Like they're going to look at that. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're highlighting the right thing if you're working with type. So as you can see, our guides are locked. I love doing this trick. I love that we learned this together today. <laughs> But I was able to help. I feel like sometimes I'm like, uh oh, I don't have any tips. I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but here I am knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, Everyone's okay. so excited to see you tomorrow as well. Okay, We've good. been enjoying your creative process so much. You know, I'm so along the way, that. making jokes and designing <laughs> together. I think that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that I had this like opportunity to be live. I mean, this is really my first live, like doing something like this. It's really making me think like, I should be doing it more you know I should be talking talking out more with my designs because sometimes I go through my process very quickly you know I'm not <laughs> I don't do it as I I mean on YouTube I'm very edited you know I edit myself down so it's not as candid as live <laughs> which is I mean of course this is like a very unique experience so it's not it's not an edited an edited experience I want to, I think, change where this goes. I think I want to kind of level these things. 
hmm, okay. I see what's going on here. So if I, that's on this line where it's like at the end and then this kind of hangs above. So I think what we're gonna do is make the bottom part hang below at the same distance, just so it looks a little bit more even. So let's bring this. Anthony says, you have inspired me to redo some of my work, so thank you. Oh, wow. Anthony, I'm so glad. I want to see your work. I want to <laughs> I want to see everyone's work. Tag me if you're, like, making this brand, like I said, like, if you want to do that as well. Um, it would be awesome to see everyone's, everyone's work. Augustina has a tip. So for aligning, you can select the two objects and click yeah. again on the one you want to keep in place and then press the align tool oh okay wait so like okay so where is the align align oh, I, I can i can vouch for this this is this works every time okay. and then like that oh i see what yeah. they mean okay okay that's awesome and then if i were like to hit that oh i see what they mean okay i see everything would align to the same point that is smart. That is really smart. See, this is like like little things with Illustrator. It's just like you don't know because, you know, it's not exactly meant for like this type of stuff, but I love it for this type of stuff. So I am in awe of everyone's tips. <laughs> I love it. Chris says, great live stream. Positive feedback from everywhere, Paula. What a beautiful day. Thank <laughs> you. I'm so, I'm so happy everyone is like having so much fun and like has helped so much contribute in here. Like we've all picked colors together. Team purple is uh, <laughs> going strong. <laughs> I love it. No, I love I love what we've been doing today. It's like been so much fun. Orko Prabhu says, thanks for the stream. Thank you for coming. This has been so fun. So I'm really, really happy with how this is going. And tomorrow, guys, get ready. We have more to come because yes. it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm loving how that works. Let, let's get these guides away so we can really look at it. See, that looks so nice. Like even this donate and shop um, kind of just being like completely boxed in, you know, like making it, making sure it looks flat to each other. Like I, I like to kind of just do that instead of just have it written out, um, like left aligned or center aligned. Like I like it to look kind of boxed into its own, its own shape, which I think is cool. But yeah, wow. So yeah, tomorrow the plan is to put this into a mock-up. I have one here. Um, so it'll go on a, on a business card mock-up just so it looks like a, an actual printed thing and it just always elevates the style of it when you put it into mock-ups i love oh, i love mock-ups i can't <laughs> talk about it enough because it really it really expanded my work when i started using them because through college i didn't think to use them i, I was just presenting my work as it was and then you know actually creating the work a lot of the time like actually printing and putting together those those things like packaging design or what have you. But then now I don't always have the means to do that because I'm not in school. So for me, I'm like creating these imagined brands and, you know, putting them into mock-ups brings it to life. Like, and that's what really, what really works online when you're sharing your work, like on social media or on Behance or whatever. Oh, I love it. This purple oh, is amazing. <laughs> this purple has made me so happy. <laughs> But yeah, that's like basically all we were going to do today too. So this is like perfect timing that we got everything done in time because um, that was the plan. So yeah, tomorrow, like I said, um, tissue paper, we're going to do a pattern because like, like I said about the brand, um, I don't know if everyone heard it, but we're going to be doing like if it had an online store, you could ask about your size and your style and then they would send you a curated like box full of clothes. So that's like a great way to like recycle through fashion, like, you know, part of this brand. So I think that's a really interesting way to just like, I don't know, have a brand, have a concept like that. So, um, yeah, so we're going to do that tomorrow, do a tissue paper pattern, which I think will be really fun. <laughs> And then have the clothing tags and have like a poster that would be out there in the community. I want this to be very like people based, people oriented oriented. So I want people to look and be like, oh yeah, I saw that on the street. And then I went to the to the store, to the flea market where they were at and donated my clothes. So that's really the that's really the the goal 
of the visual aspect of this brand. That you you just summed it up so well. And we have seven <laughs> minutes left, but I have a question for you, Paula. Yeah. You seem so passionate about the work you do, but what happens? Like, how do you deal with a creative block? Oh, creative block. Oh, the worst. <laughs> I know. I, literally, yeah, I've gone through so many phases of like feeling like that. Um, so I I definitely like challenged myself. And I think that these imagined brands have really helped me because they've helped me just think like, you know what, let's just create a concept, just a word, a concept, or, you know, just me saying, oh, I would make, I want to make a candle brand. Like, you know, what would that look like? And just thinking of these things like objects I have around my house or something thinking like, you know, I have sunscreen. Okay. What if I made a sunscreen brand? What would that look like? And just start thinking like that. And these imagined brands have helped me so much with thinking about what to do next. And if I'm stuck in a place, you know, I'll, I'll go to the internet for inspiration. Obviously I love my Pinterest boards. <laughs> I'm obsessed with going on Pinterest and looking around and just looking online, like Behance and everything where people have such amazing work. I feel like that is the place I go to and it definitely helps me. It helps kickstart me. You know what I mean? Like it helps, it helps me think I should be doing this. <laughs> so yeah, I do that. But, um, but yeah, the imagined brands have helped so much because sometimes it's nice to work without pressure too. It's nice to work and think this isn't for a specific client. This isn't going out there for a specific purpose. It's just for me or it's just to create. And, you know, that's really fun. <laughs> so that, that's my That, that's that my was advice. beautifully put. That was really beautifully put. And oh, with okay. that, we come to an end for the session. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. You all have been wonderful. Paula, you're the best, literally. We'll be back tomorrow at noon Pacific. So join us for part two. Also stay tuned for the XD daily creative challenge with Elise immediately following the stream. And just thank you for being here. This was wonderful. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to come back tomorrow. Thank you so much.